Moving on to question number 11. So question 11 says, height of the plant is regulated by which of these four factors? The first thing to note is that whenever you have these attributes like height, these are not directly impacted by the DNA. Well, the DNA and the genes, they give you a maximum limit. You know, they give you a blueprint. But it's the growth hormones that will influence, uh, that will regulate the height. The same thing happens in humans also, right? And uh, plants as well. So uh, you must have uh, seen some of those ads, these drinks claiming to boost your height. So what, what is that thing which they are claiming to boost or influence? It's the hormones that they want to uh, influence, okay? So that the height can be influenced. Anyway, so whenever you see height of a plant or an animal, it's regulated by, it's regulated by the growth hormones, okay? So option A and B are out the window. So I'm going to just cross it. Uh, option C and D both say growth hormones, but let's look at some more details. So growth hormones under the influence of the enzymes coded by a gene. Okay, yes, growth hormones are definitely coded by the genes. Uh, and uh, that also which enzyme is going to be associated with which growth hormone that is also coded by the gene. Okay, the statement is correct. Growth hormones directly under the influence of a gene. Okay. Well, that's not true. I'll tell you why. See, growth hormones directly influence cell elongation and division. They affect the plant height. However, their production and activity are controlled by enzymes. These enzymes are coded by the genes. So, it's the third option that's correct. Not directly under the influence. Not this one. Okay. Uh, a couple of more pointers for you. See, we know that genes play a fundamental role in plant height regulation. From there, they, they not just code the enzy enzymes, they code the proteins also involved in the growth process. DNA is the blueprint of genes. And genes determine what is the maximum potential height a plant can reach. So yeah, uh, with these insights, let's move on to the next question, which is a question uh, related to a sportsman. Okay, let's look at this question. <clears throat> it says, uh, we have a sportsman who is, who has come back after a long break and he's doing a routine exercise and he suffered cramps. Well, I would say most of us have been through such a situation before. When you stop exercising for a while and then you restart, you get these cramps. Why do we get these cramps? So, let's identify the reason. Lack of carbon dioxide and formation of pyruvate, no. Uh, presence of oxygen and formation of ethanol, no. Lack of oxygen and formation of lactic acid, yes. Okay, it's the lactic acid. That gives you those cramps. So, what's happening with lactic acid? How is acid getting produced in the body? See, when we exercise, our muscles are respiring, but anaerobically. Okay, they are respiring, they are uh, breathing in the absence of oxygen. That process produces lactic acid. And this lactic acid is responsible for the cramps we get during heavy exercises. Okay, uh, with that, let's move on to the next question, which is question number 13. An object is placed in front of a convex mirror. Okay. Let me draw the schematic quickly. An object is placed in front of the convex mirror. Uh, its image is formed. Okay. Uh, where is its image formed? That's the question. 
Now, you can come from the application of convex mirrors, okay? We all know that convex mirrors are used in the rear view uh, mirrors of our cars and vehicles, scooters, motorcycles, right? How are the images formed? Let's look at the options. At a distance equal to the object? No, definitely not. Because if you look at the uh, convex mirrors, the mirrors that you have in your vehicles, it says objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. That's a warning, okay? You might think that there is a vehicle too far away behind, but that's not the truth. It's closer than it appears. So option A is definitely not correct. At twice the distance of the object in front of the mirror, it's closer, it's not far, okay? So this isn't correct. Half the distance of the object in front of the mirror. Well, for some cases that's a possibility, but you can't say that always, okay? It's not always at half the distance in front of the mirror. So this is also not correct. The fourth option is the only one left. Let's see what it says. It says it's behind the mirror and its position varies according to the object's distance. Of course, it's behind the mirror. So, the image that is formed, it's going to be formed somewhere here, okay? That's, that's how we are going to, we will be able to see it, right? We are looking at the mirror and, we are looking at the mirror and we are seeing these objects. So, the objects for, are forming the images behind the mirror. So this part is true and its position varies according to the object's distance, which is true, okay? So this is the correct answer. Let's move on to the 14th question. When light enters the atmosphere, it strikes on extremely fine particles, which deflect the rays of light in all possible directions, yes. This is due to, so we have to identify the technical term that is given to this phenomena. Is it scattering or is it disperse, dispersion? Of course, it's not reflection of light, okay, because reflection is total reversal. Uh, it's not refraction also. Refraction is the bending of light when uh, the light ray moves from one medium to the other medium. Here what's happening is, these extremely fine particles are uh, deflecting the rays of light in all possible directions. So it is either scattering or dispersion. We have to choose which one and to choose the correct answer we need to know about both scattering and dispersion. So scattering and dispersion both involve, both involve the bending of light because of some reason. Scattering happens because of a third party, an object or some dust particles are there and the light kind of scatters. So that's scattering. What is dispersion? Here also the light splits, like when white light passes through a prism. The light would split into its seven constituent colors. But this is because of the property of light itself. Okay, it's because of the property of light that in different media it moves with a different uh, 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 velocity and so on. So this answer is going to be scattering of light because this is happening because of these fine particles, dust particles or even fog particles. All these phenomena uh, which are caused by these uh, external, the third parties are scattering of light. Let's move on to the next question. <clears throat> in 1987, an agreement was uh, formulated by the UNEP to freeze the production of something to prevent depletion of something else. X and Y are respectively referred to. Okay. It banned the production of X. So X must be something man-made. To prevent the depletion of Y, 
which must be a natural, naturally occurring substance. Uh, so, why is ozone and ozone and to prevent the depletion of ozone, uh, the government or the government all across the globe and the UNEP they banned CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. So CFCs were banned. Earlier in refrigerators, air conditioners, CFC was used as a refrigerant to uh, cool. Uh, so CFCs were banned. Yeah, that's the answer. And the second one, that means why is your ozone? Ozone. Okay. Let's move on to the next question now. Question number 16. Which of the following features relates to biodegradable substances? Well, let's break down this word biodegradable. This word means something that can be degraded, right? So, this gives us some hint. Let's look at the option. <clears throat> Biodegradable substances are broken down by biological process. So, this option might be correct. Let's look at the other options also. Remain inert. No, they don't remain inert. They are broken down by biological process. We know that. Option C. Persist in the environment for a long time. No, not for a long time, okay. Uh, they are quickly broken down by microbes. So, this is not correct. May harm the ecosystem? No. Biodegradable substances don't harm the ecosystem. They are generated from earth. They dissolve into the earth. So, this is not correct. The correct option is option A. Okay, now... Uh, Question number 17 to 20, we have assertion reason questions. There's a very simple strategy to solve assertion reason questions. I'm going to share that in the explanation of the next four questions. Okay. Uh, I hope you are aware of the format. So uh, I'll quickly explain the format of assertion reason questions. Uh, you have a statement given to you and you have a reason explaining that statement. If both the statements and the reasons are correct and the reason correctly explains the statement made, then you choose option A. Okay. Uh, and option B, C and D, you can read the details. What are those? Let's move on to question number 17 now. <clears throat> so assertion says that the rusting of iron is endothermic in nature. And the reason says, as the reaction is slow, the release of heat is not evident. Okay. Reason talks about the release of heat, whereas assertion tells you that it's endothermic. One thing is sure, that assertion and reasons are refuting one another. Okay. Definitely, both are not true. So, you can discard option A here. Okay. Now, rusting of iron, actually, iron is getting oxidized. So, it must be releasing heat. I'll be slowly, but it must be releasing heat. And it's not endothermic, it's exothermic. So, now we know. Rusting of iron is actually an exothermic reaction and that's why here, the correct option that I would choose would be that assertion is wrong or assertion is false, but the reason is correct. Okay. Yes, it does rele release heat slowly. Let's move on to the next question. So yeah, question number 18. It says, uh, probability of survival of an organism produced through sexual reproduction is more than that produced through the asexual mode. We'll see whether this statement is true or not uh, from the perspective of variations. Okay, the answer is given to you. See, uh, you bring in genes from two different parents, right? And that's the variation we are talking about here. More variations means 
you will have more fighting capacity, fighting with pathogens and things like those. And what happens with the asexual reproduction? So there's a genetic homogeneity, right? The both both are the parents have very similar genes. So there's an increased vulnerability to pathogens as well as uh, environmental changes. That's one thing. Uh, then there are harmful mutations that happen, which may damage the being. Okay, so uh, asexual repro reproduction is, uh, uh, you know, not an advantage there. Also, uh, also there is a very limited evolutionary potential in asexual reproduction, whereas in sexual reproduction you have plenty. Okay, uh, you can go back revise the genetics chapter once, and these all things will will be clear. <coughs> Uh, let's look at question number 19 now. A compass needle is placed near a current carrying wire. Okay. The deflection of the compass needle decreases when the magnitude of the current in the wire is, it, is increased. The deflection decreases when the current is increased. That's not how it is. The deflection or the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current. The amount of current right so if b increases b being the magnetic field the deflection will also increase there's no reason when i increase the current the deflection will reduce there's no reason for that okay so i think the assertion is wrong here uh, because if i'm increasing the current the current is increased so this is not true okay the needle's deflection will also increase the needle's deflection will also increase uh, moving on to the last question which is okay so the answer to this would be here assertion is wrong so that would be option d assertion is wrong but yeah reason was true so option d i did not tell you the answer for the second one here uh, both were correct so option a would have been correct okay uh, the last question <clears throat> let's look at question number 20 now biodegradable substances result in the formation of compost and natural replenishment hmm. makes sense this is what happens yes formation of compost and natural replenishment what's the reason given uh, it is due to breakdown of complex inorganic substances into organic ones. Interesting. How can you break an inorganic substance into an organic substance? This is not possible. Because the basis of classification is that if something has carbon in it and a bunch of other conditions, only then it's called organic, right? If it's an inorganic substance, you can't really break it down into an organic substance. So I would say the reason is incorrect. If the assertion is right and the reason is wrong, uh, this is option C. So option C is the answer here. With this, we have concluded section A solution of this question paper. Section B, section C, and C, D, and E the solution to these questions are given on the CBSE websites itself, the detailed solutions. Okay, so you can go check that out. You can download the solutions uh, and uh, look at those. Uh, thank you so much for joining these sessions, students. Uh, have a nice day. Goodbye.